Hello, welcome to lecture 5 of Elec Eng 2 CI5. Uh, we'll discuss in this lecture the concept of voltage and current dividers. And these these um, ratios or these division ratios are used very often analyzing circuits and they help us to do um, uh, fast calculations. So I uh, will spend some time discussing them. We'll discuss the case where you have multiple resistors and multiple sources uh, for both current division and voltage division. Okay, so um, if we have a circuit that consists of a single loop, it's very important that it's only one loop. So um, you have something like this. Uh, you have a voltage source V of T. You have two resistances R1 and R2. So you have here R1 in this resistance here, and this one is R2. Uh, R1 will have a voltage VR1 across it. R2 will have a voltage VR2 across it. And accord according to Kirchhoff a voltage law, V of t V must be equal to VR1 plus VR2. So um, in that case, we'll see that VR1 takes some percentage of the total voltage V. And uh, the resistor R2 takes another percentage of the voltage of the total voltage V, such that the sum of the two voltages, VR1 and VR2, will be equal to V. So we'd like to know what is this division ratio. Okay? The most important thing when you analyze this circuit is just to realize if you apply KCL at point 1 or at point 2 that the same current is flowing in the circuit, okay? So the current I here is the same current I1 flowing in the resistor R1 is the same current I2 flowing in the resistor R2. It is one loop, it is, it, is, it is the same current, and this is why voltage division is possible. So if you have a, a loop where some of the current, say, is connected to another part of the circuit like this, you have another resistor and so on, then this is not uh, a single loop anymore because the same current flowing here, the current flowing here, is not the same current flowing here anymore. So you can't talk about voltage division. Uh, you have to be careful with that. You have to make sure that the same current is flowing through R1, R2. And, of course, we can make many variations. You can have split here. Anyway, voltage division does not apply unless you have the same current flowing in both resistors. And in that case, you can talk about, um, about uh, the voltage division issue. Okay, so we agreed it is the same current flowing in this loop, the same current everywhere. We have two voltages, VR1 and VR2. The sum of VR1 and VR2 must be equal to the total voltage V. So if this is 10 volts, this may be 4, this is 6, this may be 5 and 5, 2 and 8. This division ratio will depend on the two value of the two resistances R1 and R2. Remember, there is the same current flowing here. Then VR1 is equal to I multiplying R1. VR2, which is the voltage across the second resistor, is equal to the current multiplying R2. This is from Ohm's law. Okay? Uh, so, uh, but what is I? What is I here in this case? We can calculate I from this expression. V, V, the total voltage is VR1 plus VR2. But VR1 is equal to IR1. VR2 is equal to IR2, where I is the current in the loop. Then I can simply say that the current flowing in the circuit is equal to the voltage divided by R1 plus R2. And this one here, this resistance in the denominator, is the equivalent resistance of this loop. Okay, so these two resistances in series, and this is something we will know will use very often. When two resistances are both in series, then they can be replaced by one equivalent resistance whose value is their summation, R1 plus R2. So this looks effectively like one resistance, R equivalent, whose value here is R1 plus R2. So you can see the current is equal to the voltage divided by R equivalent, and this looks like Ohm's law applying for this equivalent resistance. Then you go back and say the voltage across R1 is equal to the current we just calculated multiplying R1. So now we get this expression for VR1, we get this expression for VR2. Okay, so the, now it's obvious that there is a, some division ratio or some voltage division ratio. VR1 is a fraction of V of T and VR2 is another fraction of V of T. This fraction for the fraction for R1 is R1 over R1 plus R2. So the higher the value of R1, the higher its percentage of the voltage. 
and the same thing is happening for R2. And if you notice, if you add this ratio to this ratio, you get 1. You get 100%. Because the summation of VR1 plus VR2 must be equal to the total voltage V. Okay, what will happen if we don't have a single source? We have multiple sources in a loop. Again, it must be the same current flowing through the loop. Okay, then we simply apply KVL. And through applying KVL, we can get the expression for the current if you go in the clockwise direction and you write the expression for uh, for uh, for kvl you can simply say v1 of t and minus vr1 minus v2 of t minus vr2 plus vr v3 of t minus vr3 is equal to zero Okay, so you can see here this source and this source V1 and V3 they do help one another because we go from negative to positive here and from negative to positive here when we go in the clockwise direction. While V2 is opposing them, V2 is going from positive to negative. V1 is trying to push current this way, V3 is, to, is trying to push current this way, while V2 is trying to push current the opposite direction. So if you, if you write KVL, if you move the, all the sources to the left-hand side, keep only the, the voltage drops of the resistor VR1, VR2, and VR3 in the right-hand side, and then replace VR1 by IR1, replace VR2 by IR2, and so on, you end up with this expression. There is something called equivalent voltage, which is V1 plus V3 minus V2, there is something called the equivalent resistance of this loop, which is R1 plus R2 plus R3. And the current in the loop is equal to the equivalent voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. So when we have a loop with multiple sources, we can replace it by only one source, which is equal to by this equivalent source. We can replace it by only one resistance, which is the sum of all the resistances. And then we can see the current flowing in this loop is equal to the equivalent voltage divided by the equivalent resistance as shown here. Okay? So, the, so any number of resistances connected in series, they can be replaced by one resistance which is equal to their sum. And this is something we use very often in electrical engineering in analyzing circuits. So once you have found the equivalent voltage and the equivalent current, now to find the division ratio. What will be the voltage given to the resistance R1, the resistance R2, the resistance R3? I hear I, in, the, in this example, I use the only three resistances, but it's really, it can be generalized to any, to any number of them. We agreed that V equivalent of R equivalent will give you the current. So this is the current I. When you multiply the current I by R1, you get the voltage VR1. Okay, now, so the ratio, the ratio of the voltage given to VR1 or VR1 will be equal to this ratio here of V equivalent. Okay, so uh, the percentage of the voltage across the resistance R1 is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. So it is the resistance R1 divided by the sum of all the resistances in series. The voltage given to R2 in the same way this is a current, okay, it is the same current in the loop. You multiply it by R2, you get the voltage across the resistor R2, okay? Now, this R equivalent is nothing but R1 plus R2 plus R3. It is the sum of all the resistances in the loop. So you can see, if R1 is relatively large relative to all the other resistances, it will have a high percentage of the equivalent voltage. Now it is of the equivalent voltage, and the equivalent voltage is the sum of all the sources going around the, cl the clockwise direction, as we did here in this case. And the, we sh it should be clear that we, we went in the clockwise direction because we assumed the current to be flowing in the clockwise direction. Uh, you could, of course, make the assumption that the current I is flowing in the counterclockwise direction, and in that case, V equivalent will can be found by summing the voltages in the counterclockwise direction. The same thing will happen with, with R3, there is no difference. So you can see each one of them takes a ratio of the voltage, and when you sum these ratios, you have R1 here, you have R2, you have R3, you end up getting 100% of the equivalent, as expected. 
Okay, we have an example here. Uh, we have a circuit with two sources and we have three resistances. Uh, this resistance R1, 2K, R2, 3K, R3, 5K. Would like to find the voltage drops VR1, VR2, and VR3. Would like to find the voltage VAB. How how high or how, how is the voltage of A or the potential at A higher than the potential at B, VAB. Now, this is one loop. Um, so we have the same current flowing all through all the elements here, okay? So we can apply voltage division. One requirement of voltage division is that the current should be the same in all the components, okay? So uh, the current, we can now say that this is one loop. If I'm going to assume that the current is flowing in the clockwise direction, I will assume here a current I, so it's flowing this way, okay? And um, in that case, I have an equivalent voltage if I go in the clockwise direction. I have here plus 30 and I have here minus 20. Okay, remember this source is trying to push current in the clockwise direction, while this source is trying to push current in the counterclockwise direction. This is why we must subtract. So the equivalent voltage is 30 volts minus 20 volts. Okay, this is the equivalent voltage. I can replace this whole circuit by this very simple circuit here. I, I can put 10 volts here, okay, which is the equivalent voltage. And the equivalent resistance will be the sum of all the resistances. 2K, 3K, and 5K. So it's going to be equal to 10K here. Okay, it's in 10 kilo ohm. Okay, so this is the equivalent uh, voltage. This is the equivalent resistance. So I'm going to now analyze this problem. First, find the equivalent voltage, which is 10. Find the equivalent resistance. And then the voltage drop across this resistance is equal to 2K divided by the equivalent resistance, which is 10K, 2K plus 3K plus 5K, multiplying by the equivalent voltage, which is 10 volts. And then the voltage difference, uh, of voltage drop across the 3K will be equal to the 3K divided by the sum of all the resistances, which is 10K, multiplying by the equivalent voltage, which is 10. The voltage drop across the 5, 5K is going to be exactly the same way. It's 5K divided by, by 5 plus 2 plus 3, and this is all multiplying by 10 volts, which is the equivalent voltage. So now let's see how these calculations will proceed. Okay, so I drew the circuit again. Uh, remember that the current is flowing, is, is assumed to be flowing in the clockwise direction, and this is why I put these signs for the drops, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, they shouldn't be confused why the drops, the, uh, the, the, the polarity for the drops is shown in that way because I assume that the current is going to be in the, in, the, in the clockwise direction which is actually a correct assumption because 30 volts is higher than 20 volts so the current will be flowing this way, okay? and because the current is flowing this way in the resistor the drop must be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? The equivalent voltage, as we agreed, going in the clockwise direction, is 30 minus 20 is 10 volts. The equivalent resistance is the sum of all resistances in this loop. So it's 2K plus 3K plus 5K, so it's equal to 10K. Then the voltage across the resistor R1 is a fraction of the equivalent voltage. And this ratio here is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is R equivalent. So this will give you the equivalent voltage, which is 10 multiplying 2 over 10, so this will be 2 volts. This one here, again, is the same story for R2. Uh, the ratio is R2 over R equivalent, and you multiply that by the equivalent voltage to get the voltage across the resistor R2. R equi v equivalent is 10 volts, R2 is 3K, so 3K over 10K, this will be equal to 3 volts. And, uh, and then we move to uh, discuss... Um, uh, the third the third drop, which is the drop here across this resistor, okay? Um, and uh, for this resistor here, exactly the same thing. Uh, it is This is uh, 5K, okay? So it's 5K over the total resistance, which is 10K, and to multiply by the equivalent volts, you get 5 volts. So I draw it here as 5 volts. So this is now how, after you solve the circuit, it now becomes 30 volts, 2 volts, 3 volts, 20 volts and 5 volts. Of course, KVL does apply. So we have 30 is equal to 20 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5. So 30 is equal to 30. That's fine. And the current here, 
you can get the current here this is 2k it's going to be 1 milliampere 3k over 3 volts over 3k will be 1 milliampere 5 volts over 5k will be 1 milliampere and if you, if you divide uh, v equivalent over r equivalent it is 10 over 10k is 1 milliampere so our answer is correct it's very important when you analyze circuits that you always check your answer now i would like to calculate the voltage vab we there are two ways of doing it the first one is that you go in the counterclockwise direction from here to here okay and then you see this point is higher than b by 20 volts and this point a is higher than this point by 3 volts then i can simply say vab if i if i go the, the calculated that way using kvl is equal to 20 volts plus 3 volts it's going to be 23 volts or i can do it from the other direction i can i can go in the clockwise direction this way okay and then i start to sum the drops going in the uh, counter clockwise direction this is again from kvl from kvl okay so here going this way you see plus minus so it's going to be minus 5 volts you see negative positive so it's going to be plus 30 and another plus minus you have minus 2 so it's going to be minus 5 plus 30 minus 2 is going to be equal to 23 volts the two answers should be exactly the same and in a circuit there are usually many many ways you can calculate the voltage difference between two points you can take many many uh, contours or many um, uh, um, uh, connections between them a number of branches different number of branches but they sh should all give you the same answer okay uh we have here the the, um, the kv the the second part which is the current dividers current dividers try to answer the the dual problem if you have a current source it's supplying a current i and you have an a t first we start with two resistances in parallel this current I will be split into I1 and I2. And according to KCL, Kirchhoff current law, the current flowing into the loop will be the sum of the two currents flowing out from the loop. So I of T must be equal to I1 of T plus I2 of T. Okay, but what's I1 of T? Remember, R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. The, the, the top node and the bottom node for each one of them is the same. So the voltage drop across them is, is the same. It is V of T. It is V of T. The voltage drop is the same. So we can I can simply replace I1 of T by V of T over R1. I can replace I2 of T by V of T over R2. Okay? So um, when you do that, you can take V of T out as a common term as shown here. And now we can say that this, this, this looks I, when you have I is equal to some term multiplying V, then this is what we call the equivalent conductance. Because now I can replace this whole circuit by something like this. This is a current flowing, and this is a conductance G. G parallel, we call the parallel equivalent parallel conductance. And this is I, okay? And this is going to give me the same voltage V, okay? So these two resistances in parallel can be replaced by this equivalent conductance, G parallel, okay? Or we can reorganize it. We can um, take the inverse of that. We can write the voltage as I multiplying the, uh, the battery resistance, the equivalent battery resistance, which is given by this expression. It's exactly driven from here, okay? And this is a very important result we use very often in electrical engineering. When you have two resistances connected in parallel, then these two resistances can be replaced by one equivalent resistance its values are parallel and it's given by one over r parallel is equal to one over r1 plus one over r2 or you can simplify it if you take the common denominator you get the result that many engineers memorize by heart that r parallel is r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 you multiply them and then you divide by their sum okay so so now what we did we managed to find the equivalent parallel resistance, but we did not get the division ratio yet. We know that I1 will be a certain fraction of I. For example, if this is 10 milliampere, this can be 5 milliampere and 5 milliampere, or 
4 milliampere and 6 milliampere or 3 milliampere and 7 milliampere or 2 milliampere and 8 milliampere. Any combination is possible depending on the values of R1 and R2. These are the two values that determine the division ratio. So we'd like to see what would be the expression. We'll continue driving that on the next slide. So uh, we stopped at this expression here in the previous slide. Uh, we found that uh, the, the current and the voltage are related by this equivalence, equivalent uh, parallel conductance. And uh, we found that the voltage related to the current by this equivalent barrier resistance. Okay, so now we know we know what is the uh, what is the voltage. Okay, we know what is the voltage in terms of the current. Okay, now but what is the current going through R1? It is this voltage divided by R1. What is the current going through R2? It is this voltage divided by R2. So if I divide by R1, R1 will disappear. If divide by R2, R2 will disappear. So you end up with this interesting result. The current going through I1 does not have R1 in the numerator. It has actually R2, the opposite resistance. The current going through I2 has R1 in the, in the numerator. So this is the division ratio between them. It is the opposite, and this is something you have to remember. In current division, we use the other resistance, not the resistance uh, not the resistance you are seeking to calculate its current, okay? So to calculate the current going through the resistance R1, you have to put R2 in the numerator. To calculate the, the current going through the resistor or the resistance R2, you have to put R1 in the numerator and so on, okay? But this tells us something very interesting. If R1 is big, if R1 is big, it's going to get little current, it is opposite to the voltage division ratio. In voltage division, the higher the value of the resistance, the higher the voltage is going to get. Here, the higher the value of the resistance means it represents more resistance to the current. And then the current would, would, would flow in, in, the, in, the, in the, smaller, the smaller resistance value. So this is very important to remember that smaller resistor gets more current because the ratio the current is, is actually inversely proportional to the value of the resistor. Okay, what will happen if we have multiple resistors in parallel? Well, the same, the same approach can be generalized. You are going to say that this current I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 up to IN. Okay, but what is I1? It is the voltage V divided by R1. What is I2? The voltage V divided by R2 and so on. And when you do that, you'll be able to show that all these resistances in parallel can be replaced by one equivalent barrier resistance whose value is given by this expression. And this is a generalization of the two resistor case. Okay, uh, so here, uh, this circuit, it can be very complicated, many components, but we can replace it by only a single resistance connected to the current source. Okay, this is the current source here. And this one is what we call R parallel. Now, if you want to calculate the current flowing through the resistor R1, it is equal to the voltage. This is the voltage divided by R1. Remember, we have this equivalent circuit. Okay? So this current here sees one equivalent resistance. Its value of RB. And the voltage across it is it will be equal to V. The voltage of the circuit, which is the same voltage here. This is V and this is V. All of them have the same voltage V. Okay. So, when you multiply the current by the equivalent resistance as shown here, in this case, when you multiply the current by the equivalent resistance as shown here in this case, this will give you the voltage V. So, if you divide this voltage V by R1, you get the current I1. And this is what I did here. So remember, this is coming from the equivalent circuit. This is a voltage in terms of the equivalent circuit. And when you divide the voltage by the resistor, you get the current. So the current flowing in I1 is given by this expression. And what is RB? RB, um, the, the book uh, that we are using, uses um, a similar um, and, and uh, a little bit ty different type of expression. We'll say that the equivalent resistance looking into this side, it is the sum, it is the barrel combination of R1 with the rest of the resistances. 
and this is what I call here R total one. R total one is is the parallel combination of all resistances except for R one. So R one here, this is how we can draw it really. We can draw it this way. This is R one, and the R one is in parallel with R total one. Okay, and the current is flowing this way. This is the current I that we have. Okay, so what's happening here? Is that I replaced all the resistances connected in parallel with R with R1. I replaced them by this one equivalent resistance. So 1 over RT1 is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 up to 1 over Rn. There is no 1 over R1 here. Okay? So it's again a it's it's it's, uh, it's uh, this equivalent resistance is the barrel combination of RT1 and the R1, as shown here. So the barrel combination of these two, if looking from this side, I will see the equivalent resistance RP1. Actually, I'm going to call it, sorry, I'm sorry to call it RB. It's not RB1. It's RB. It's the total barrel resistance. So the total barrel resistance is R1 in parallel with RT1. And it's also R2 in parallel, R2 in parallel with RT2 and so on. Anyway, so we write it this way. R1 will cancel with R1 and you end up with this expression. So this is now the current division issue we have to calculate. So you have to do to do one calculation. Find the barrel combination of all resistances except for R1, and this is going to give you RT1, and then multiply your current by RT1 over RT1 plus R1. You do the same exactly for the second resistor. This is a voltage V divided by R2. You get that you get you get your uh, you get the, the current, uh, uh, the, you get here, this is this is voltage divided by R2, you get I2. Uh, this RP, which is the barrel combination of all resistances, is equivalent to R2 in parallel with all the other resistances. So this combination of all other resistances, we call it RT2, or I call it RT2 here. The book, I believe, calls it RTJ for the jth resistance. So you end up with this similar expression. So the current flowing in the second resistor is equal to the, cur the, the current source that we have multiplying by this division ratio. So what is the net result of this calculation? We got now a division ratio. We know this ratio for the first resistor. We know this ratio for the second resistor. And we know it for the nth resistor. I simply have to calculate RT1, the barrel combination of all resistors except for the first one. And the RT2, the barrel combination of all resistors except for the second one. Okay, and this will give me my current division ratio. Okay, let's see an example. Uh, we have here a 10 milliampere current source. And uh, it's, there are two resistances in parallel. And for current division to work, you must have the two resistances in parallel. Okay, because they must have the same voltage across them this is this is this is something we use in our derivation and it must hold must continue to hold okay so i can simply say the current flowing in the resistor r1 is equal to r2 over r1 plus r2 multiplying 10 milliampere you can see when i wanted to get i i1 the current flowing here i use the other resistor in the numerator because current division gives more current to the smaller resistance okay you see that this current is equal the current i1 is equal to milliampere now if i want to get this current i2 it's going to be 4k over 4k plus 1k okay so you can see here that most of the current is flowing in the uh, in the smaller resistance the 1k resistance the 1 kilo ohm resistance is getting 8 milliampere while the 4 kilo ohm resistance is getting 2 milliampere and you can check your answer is right, but multiplying 2 milliampere by 4K, you get 8 volts. You multiply 8 milliampere by 1K, you get 8 volts. Because the voltage across this one is the same as the voltage across this one. And as I said in lectures, it's very important after you do a calculation, after you finish it, take a look at your answer say, does this make sense? Can I double check it? Can I calculate it? Can I check the two voltages are the same or not? The one last theoretical thing I would like to mention here, what will happen if you have multiple sources? If you have not only a current, one current source, but multiple sources connected in parallel. So this one is pushing current to the node. This one is draining current from the node. This one is pushing current to the node. Exactly the same way that we did it for multiple sources in KVL. We have to find, we say we apply KCL here. 
we say uh, I1 or the sum of currents flowing in is equal to the currents flowing out. So I1 plus I6 is going to be equal to I2 plus I3 plus I4 plus I5. This is what I wrote here. Because I3 is a source, I'm going to take it to the other side. So you can see now I have one equivalent current source. This equivalent current source is equal to the sum of this one plus this one minus this one. Why there is this negative sign? These two are pushing current to the node. Okay? While this one, is, its current is flowing out from the node, from the, this node here, up here. So this why it appears with a negative sign. So this is what we call the equivalent current. Okay? Now I have the currents I1, I4, and I5. I replace I... Uh, sorry, I2, I4, and I5. I replace I2 by V over R1. I replace I4 by V over R2. I replace I5 by V over R3, as shown here. Okay, and then this is this is now the equivalent. This is one over the equivalent resistance. A current, the equivalent current. I can simply write this one this way: that the equivalent current is equal to the voltage across all these barrel branches multiplied by the equivalent uh, barrel uh, equivalent parallel conductance. Okay, uh, and of course the barrel resistance is the opposite of, the, of this one. So what does this tell us? That if you have many resistances connected in parallel and many sources, many current sources connected in parallel, the equivalent current is the sum of all the currents flowing into the node. I have to observe the sign if there is a current flowing out from the node. And what is the equivalent resistance? It is simply the barrel combination of all the resistances and is given by this expression. 1 over R equivalence, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 1 over 3, and so on. So this is how the equivalent circuit looks like. And I use this equivalent circuit to calculate the voltage V mainly. Okay? It allows me to calculate the voltage V. Um, but, but you should understand that this circuit, from the point view of the source, it is the same as the circuit that has that had three resistances. Okay? So these three resistances were replaced by this one equivalent resistance. Okay, we have one last example here. I uh, would like to find, we have a circuit with a single current source. I would like to find the voltage V note here. Okay? So now we have three branches. So uh, if I want to get the current flowing in this branch, I have to find the barrel combination of the 8K and the 8K. This will give me R key. If, if I call this one R2, this branch here, this resistance R2, which is 12 kilo ohm, then if I call this one R2, then the barrel combination of 8K and 8K is what I call RT2. The barrel combination of all branches except for R2. Okay? So I have to calculate RT2. And then the, the current flowing here, the current flowing in this branch here, which I'm going to call here I2, is equal to the source as we derived earlier, multiplying by RT2, which is the barrel combination of these two, divided by RT2 plus R2, which is 12 kilo ohm. So by doing that, I already calculated the current flowing here. If I know the current flowing in this branch, then this current is the same current flowing here. Then the voltage drop across the 6K is equal to 6K multiplying that current. Okay, so now I use the formula that we derived earlier. The current flowing in this branch is equal to the this current source multiplying RT2, which is the barrel combination of all branches except for that branch, divided by RT2 plus R2. RT2, as we agreed, when you have two resistances connected in parallel, then you have to have you have to use the law for barrel combination, which is 8k by 8k over 8k plus 8k. However, when you do that, the calculation always gives you one half because these two have the same value. So two resistances connected in parallel will give you one half the resistance. Okay, this one will give you here uh, 64 divided by 16 will give you 4K as expected. So now I know what is the current flowing here. The current flowing here is equal to this ratio, RT2 over RT2 plus R2 multiplying the total current which is 24 milliampere. This will give you 6 milliampere. I'm leaving you, leave it, leaving it for you as an exercise.
to prove that the current flowing here and the current flowing here both are equal and they're equal to 9 milliampere. So 9 milliampere plus 9 milliampere will give you 18 milliampere. 18 milliampere plus 6 milliampere will give you 24 because this one is 24. And this current must be equal to the sum of all these three currents. Now I want to get the voltage here. I know the current is 6 milliampere and this is 6 volts. Then I'll be able to get 36 volts. How do I check that this is right? If this is 36 volts, then the voltage between here and here will be 72 volts. Because these two have the same value. These two resistances have the same value. They have the same current. 72 volts, but 8K multiplying 9 milliampere will also give you 70 volts. 8K multiplying 9 milliampere will also give you 72 volts. So the circuit is consistent. My answer is correct, and it's consistent with the rest of the circuit. So this is fine.